Welcome back to another video. I'm Jake, and today I'm going to be speaking a little bit about org modes, time, and task organization features. Now this video is going to be a little bit more unscripted than my other videos if you've seen them, but I'm going to move through these pretty quickly so uh, you shouldn't get too bored. So first we'll do a brief introduction. Now org mode has a ton of powerful task organization features including to-dos, priorities, timestamps which can be a scheduled time or a deadline. And a scheduled time would be um, saying, for example, this task should be done at this time or this event is happening at this time. And a deadline would be it needs to be done by this time. And org mode also has some really nice tracking features that you can use to log your time and keep track of how long you've been spending on really anything. So we'll start with the basics, and that's to-dos. And uh, I'm going to be offering the, the uh, vanilla org mode or the vanilla Emacs bindings. If you're using Doom or Space Emacs, they might be different, um, and I'll mention those as well. Um, now, in normal Emacs, you'll do Control C, Control T on an org mode heading. And if you look at the bottom here, we have all these options. Um, and I'm just going to press T for to do. And each of them um, corresponds to a letter on your keyboard that'll be usually the same as the first letter um, of the word. And you can, you can customize these. And I'll have information in the description how to do that. So I'll press T for to do. And now I can just write it to do. So I'll write get X. And there's a to-do for you. And we can do another one. And for this time, I'll use the um, vim or the evil binding, which is just plain old T. I'll press T. And maybe this is a read. And I'll say uh, a good book. And that's it. Now, once you're done with one of these tasks, we could do Control-C, Control-T again. And you can press D for done. And you'll see we got done. And we get this nice green color. And we also have the time that it was finished. So you can see there's a timestamp here for what time it was finished for future tracking purposes. Now that those are done, we can move on to priorities. And priorities are something that you can use concurrently with to-dos to help organize. Now, priorities will only show up ordered automatically in your agenda. And I'm not going to be going into that in this video. There are tons of videos on that already. But priorities can be set um, by, you can just do here, or priority. Uh, usually, it's a control C, comma. So I'll just do control C, comma. And I can press the letter A through E. So I'll just press B. And I have mine customized to be A through E. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's do another one. Let's do A. I also have a binding. Uh, sometimes you can use the shift up and down arrow keys um, to also help you do that. So I'll set this one to, to, uh, to E. And this can help me keep track of what's really important, what's medium important, and what's not important at all. And now if you want more priorities, so I, I've run into people asking, saying they want maybe 60 priorities for whatever reason, or they want 40, or they want 30. I think the default is just four, A through D. You can use this line in your init.el um, set Q org lowest priority. And what this does is very self-explanatory. It'll set the lowest priority. So your question mark and then the and then the letter you want. So I want A through E, so I put E. If I were to want A through Z, I could just replace this with a Z. Next up is timestamps. We'll start off with a plain timestamp on an item. And to do that, you want to do control C period. So I'll do control C period. And you can see in the bottom in this mini buffer, a calendar appears. And this is actually really nice because there are a lot of options to type here. You could use the shift and arrow keys to choose a day, but I'll leave it on Tuesday, which is today. And let's say I want to do this at 10 a.m. So I'll just type in 10 a.m. And it'll recognize that, and it'll automatically convert it to the proper timestamp. Now, this is in 24-hour time, um, but you know I don't use 24-hour time in my daily life, so I'll usually put something like 1.45 p.m., and you'll see it converts to 13.45. So what this does is, oops. That's not expected. There we go. What this will do is it'll place just a plain timestamp anywhere. I mean, you can even put these not under a to-do. Um, but under a to-do item, this will just uh, basically create an event for you. So let's say you have a meeting um, Tuesday at 13.45. Uh, this will show up in your agenda as such. Next is a scheduled task. And these are tasks that are scheduled for a particular time. And to do that, you'll do Control-C, Control-S while on the line of the, of the to-do item. And then we can set it just like usual. Now I'll show another option. Let's say this is on Thursday. Instead of mousing over using my arrow keys or whatnot, I'll just type in Thursday. And you can see it automatically corrects to that. And let's say I want 8 AM. And I put 8 AM there, and it'll automatically process that into the proper timestamp. And you can see it's scheduled for that time. And if you're in your agenda, you'll see it's scheduled for that time. And if it's passed, uh, you'll see that it's overdue or it's already happened. Next is the deadline. And to make a deadline, we'll do control C, control, control D. And if you've noticed, these all are prefixed by control C, which is um, generally like the user um, you know, buttons or, or controls for the user, uh, and control D for deadline, control S for schedule, et cetera. And this is essentially the same as a schedule, except this is when it has to be done. 
So let's say this task needs to be done by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. So I'll put in Wednesday, or I could use my arrow to mouse over, or sorry, the shift arrow keys, and I'll put in 11.59 p.m. So this needs to be done by midnight on Wednesday. And there you go, there's a deadline. Finally, I'll show you a schedule and deadline. So I'm just gonna take this same task right here because why well, type it again? Um, and now I'll just do uh, Control C, Control S, and I'll schedule it for, let's say, Wednesday at maybe uh, 2 p.m. So what this means is this task is scheduled for Wednesday at 2 p.m., which means I want to do it at 2 p.m., um, and it's due by Wednesday at midnight. Now, of course, th this system is very flexible for what you're looking for. For example, if you don't like to schedule out your tasks, you just want to do them, just skip the scheduling and leave the deadline. If your tasks don't have deadlines, uh, you know, they don't need to be, ever be done in a rush, feel free to skip the deadline or, or use the scheduling and deadline features however you feel comfortable. Finally is the time tracking, and this is a more advanced topic, um, but I think it's fairly simple if it's, if it's laid out plainly like I'm going to do here. So I've got, I've got a project, and this is really just a to-do label, so this could just as easily said to-do, project, P-R-O-J is just my, um, what I'd like to use. And it's a project I'll, I'll track, and there's some information down here. These steps are just made up for a project. You know, I could check these off. So let's say I want to keep track of how much time I spend on this project. Maybe I'm billing someone for something, or I just want to keep track of how long I'm spending just to make sure I'm getting my work done. So to clock in, which means to begin work and to begin the timer, you're going to want to use this key combination, Control-C, Control-X, Control-I. So uh, the way I like to remember, Control-C is obviously, like I said, the org mode or the user um, key binds, Control-X, and then Control-In, Control-Out, and Control-Jump, and I'll explain those. So you see, when I did the Control-I, it, it clocked me in and it created this logbook property, and this is a, this is a collapsible drawer under the to-do stamp. And in this logbook, it'll store all of these clock items. And you can see right here, it is a 907, or it was 906 when I created this clock stamp, and that stamp was created. Now, if you also look in the bottom right on my mode line, there's a timer there. And that might not show up for you, but it, uh, if it does, it's a good reminder you have a clock going. Now, I could just let this clock keep running to get some time in, um, but we don't have time for that. So instead, I'll just be clocking out and pretending my work on this project is done for this session. So I'll do Control-C, Control-X, Control-O. And sorry, Control O. And what that will do is it'll end the clock and it'll automatically sum the amount of time spent. So you can see I went from 2106 to 2107 and it'll um, be one minute, obviously, because I didn't spend that long on it. Now, also, you could uh, rem you can manually write this in. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line down and I'll just change this to like, uh, you know, 12, uh, 1206. So now this is saying I worked from 1206 till 907 and obviously that's a lot more time and you can see it automatically updated as I'm updating these numbers um, and if it's not auto updating for you um, if you're just replacing these numbers manually like here it didn't update mouse over here and do control C control C and it'll automatically update now the clock jump is another useful feature if you have a really large org file I'm gonna clock in quickly now let's say you get lost and you come over here what we can do is we can do the clock jump so I'm just gonna do that command and you can see I've jumped to the current clock. So I'll do Control C, Control X, Control J, Control C, Control X, Control J, and it automatically brings my cursor to the current project, the current clock that's running. So if you ever get lost and you want to get back to what you're working on, or let's say you're browsing through many files and you want to get back to your, your main file, uh, this is a useful way to do it. So now I'll just clock out, C, X, O, and there you go. Now we have a, a few clocks and we have a list of times here, but obviously this isn't so useful and I guess you could manually add these, but where's the fun in that? And this is Emacs, of course. So we can use something called the org clock report. So let's run that command. I'm gonna do meta X and I'll put that in. Whoops, org clock report. And what this does is this will create a table for our org task, for our, for our to do with the logbook. And you can see right here, um, the, the, there's the total time right here and there is a project to track which is the name of this item here and you can see the clock summary this is like as of or when it was created um, so if you were to export this to LaTeX or to HTML it would export along with it now this table won't automatically update but you can see it did sum the times 9 hours 11 minutes plus 1 hour or plus 1 minute plus 1 minute is 9 hours 13 minutes and let's say I just wanted to add another one of these let's say we actually did it on Monday as well yesterday um, and I'll just do control C, control C on here and it'll update. And then if I come to the header line where it says begin, 
and I do control C, control C, you'll see that the clock table updates. So remember it was 9.13 before and now it's 9.14 because I've added in this extra minute into my logbook. Now with that, that's actually all I had to show you today and I, I hope I haven't gone too long, um, but I've tried to make uh, just a brief introduction and I'll give a brief overview of what we looked at. We've looked at to-dos, basic to-dos, control C, control T. We've looked at how to prioritize those to-dos and that is control C, comma, and press a letter on your keyboard. A through E or A through D by default, and you can configure which letters you want by using orglo as priority like so. Next we looked at timestamps. We looked at a plain stamp, which is just a, a normal time. We looked at scheduled tasks, um, which are tasks scheduled for a certain time, of course. We looked at deadlines, which again, pretty simple, self-explanatory. It's a task that needs to be done or, or has a deadline at a certain time. And finally, we looked at a task with a schedule and a deadline, which means that there is a time that it should get done and a time that it needs to get done by. And finally, we looked at time tracking. We learned how to clock in, clock out, and clock jump, control C, control X, and then either CI, CO, or CJ. And then finally, we saw the org clock report, uh, which, which allows us to take all of these logbook items here and sum them in this nice table that's easily exportable, um, and it's a nice way to keep track of our time. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I usually try to reply to all of the comments and I'm always more than happy to help anyone out. And let me know if you have any more video ideas or if there's something you'd like to learn about. I'm always looking for new ideas.